These quilts are on a wall now, but they used to be on a bed. And maybe they belong in your bank account? We'll be talking about quilts with Dr. Lori on Value This with Dr. Lori. This was on somebody's bed well over a hundred years ago. That's Dr. Right. Lori, value this with Dr. Lori. What, what is this quilt about? Made by a woman named Sarah Kent Coleman in Burlington County, New Jersey. Love that county. Right, right. And this particular piece dates to about 1850. She dies in 1860. This is a typical applique quilt. So that means that we're gonna make all of the quilting, all those stitches, right? All those stitches that we're going to make to make the quilting portion. And then we're going to also applique the decoration on top with other materials or fabrics. And all of the stuff she used came from where? Well, basically they're scraps. Wow. They're scrap material, and then they would make a design. And in this particular case, you can see the nice circles, which are usually related or indicative of wedding rings, that idea oh. of someone's wedding. And then you're also seeing, again, those complementary colors. Look at the little, the, the little love oh, birds yes. here in the basket. And again, um, where you're seeing oak leaves and you're seeing different types of leaves, fidelity is important. Okay. So you see all of this relating to that idea of marriage. Yeah, no open uh, marriage symbol on this one, I not guess. Not too many. Okay. Yes. All right. So you're looking at that and you're looking at, of course, these elements that basically are mirror images of each other. Mm -hmm. So if it's folded, it still looks pretty. I love that. Now, yes. My eye says that looks like a very modern design, but my eye is also drawn to a few little marks. Now, people get quilts. How much does a mark on, a, on an old quilt diminish value? It diminishes value, but it also helps us to identify time period. So you're looking at that, and those are blood stains. And you might think one type of blood, but I'm thinking horse blood. Because while these would be on beds, they also could be used when you were in a carriage. It's chilly in Bucks County, and you're in a carriage, and there's a horse drawing your carriage. So that could be where the okay. quilt was actually utilized on an animal or actually to assist. So that's what you're seeing here. I see a lot of pieces that I appraise that will have quilts that have blood stains. They are not wow. a bad thing, but it's relatively common. Okay, let's move down yeah. to this one because, you know, this this one kind of screams Pennsylvania yes, because it's got star. that kind of hex thing. Yeah. Like, like you see on barns. Like you'll see on barns, like hex signs on barns. This is the Star of Bethlehem. So basically, Basically, um, and of course, you know, you heard my Bethlehem, right? <laughs> right? The wonderful Pennsylvania way yes, to say Bethlehem. it. Not Bethlehem. Right. You know, and basically what you're seeing here is a Star of Bethlehem um, pattern quilt. And you can see, again, these nice pinwheel decorations throughout. Again, replicating the same thing using individual small pieces of material. Also dates to the mid to late 19th century or 1800s. Okay. You know I'm always asking about value because I yes. want to retire on something I have found. The album quilt, right? The what kind? The album quilt, which is usually a quilt which is separated into nine different albums, different decorations, right? In each of the nine squares, right? Can be as much as fifty to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Is this an album? No. Is that an album? No. But it an album quilt. One which has applique or patchwork, the way both of these show those examples, can be worth between fifty to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars for one quilt. How old does this thing have to be? It has to be any time between eighteen twenty-five and eighteen fifty, so not too much older than these. It doesn't have to be old, old. Are they be... still around in yes. antiques, so you can find them? Yes. If you know what you're looking for. Yes, you asked. Where's my big money number? Yeah. Now, there's your big money number. Wow. These quilts are significant in value. Oh, yeah. Now, these are part of the Mercer's Museum's collection, and they have vast and diverse collections throughout that they display. But these particular ones are significant in value. You may have one that's significant in value. So look for condition and look for, again, the stitchery and wonderful applique pieces. Let's look at a more contemporary piece, a 20th century piece, right? So here's one that maybe more of us might have, right? From the 1920s to the 1950s, maybe grandma was a quilter. This particular piece has that idea of an album quilt because mm -hmm. it's separated into the pieces. But then all they've done here is they just have said, okay, well, here's a nice basket form that we cut out and applied on. Right. This is an inexpensive quilt Okay, compared to the other two. And, and do quilts look the same on the back too? They can. They can look exactly the same and on the back. And does that matter value-wise if they're the same on the back or a different thing? That could matter for value. 
for a couple of reasons. You don't usually have an applique quilt that has all the applique on the other side. It's usually just plain on the other side. This one probably is plain on the other side as well. But notice that they have a nice, again, border on this one that they don't have on the other I ones. I love it. I absolutely yeah. love it. Okay, real fast. Yeah. How do you keep a quilt you have so that it doesn't deteriorate? No, no washing machine. You can't put it in the agitation cycle. Okay. I want you not to be overzealous when you basically want to wash it. There are ways to do that. The American Quilt Society will actually teach you how to clean your quilt if you and need you've to. got it on your site probably too. DrLaurieV.com has all kinds of things of how do you identify a 19th, 18th, or 20th century quilt. It'll show you the different types and the different ones. But these three are great examples, and they're right here on this big beautiful wall at the big beautiful Mercer Museum here in Doylestown. Couldn't have said it better myself. We'll end on that. Dr. Laurie, thank you so much. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Value This with. Ta-da, Dr. Laurie.